بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء نعلومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحم الحمد لله we completed our study of لب اللباب and today inshallah we want to have a quick review of the book to refer to some of the topics discussed in the book and then inshallah answer some of the remaining questions uh, in general one of the characteristics of Hose studies is that for us uh, quality is more important than quantity so first we make sure that we understand properly a topic a subject a lesson and then to increase our knowledge to increase our study of new books so sometimes maybe a person has understood one book properly is better than a person who has read 10 books but has not understood properly or has not grasped them has not memorized them so therefore we say you take one lesson but you repeat it 1000 times of course it's an example but means you have to repeat it as much as it's really absorbed it is good that after we finish a book we go back and review uh, so I want to mention some of the important points uh, first of all uh, Ayatollah Tehrani Sayyid Muhammad Hussein Hussein Tehrani who was one of the students of Allah Metabatabai says that uh, this book is taqrirat this book is an account of the teachings of Allah Metabatabahi uh, Rahmatullah Alai about a spiritual journey in the years 1369 and 1368 uh, Hajri Qamari in city, holy city of Qom and because he was asked to have a kind of contribution to a book for the uh, commemoration of martyrdom of Ayatollah Mutahari he prepared those notes and offered it uh, to that uh, collection of the articles and papers which were published for the martyrdom of Ayatollah Mutahari uh, in the first part of the introduction he talks about uh, our engagement in material life and how we get really busy with material needs and material attractions and he says the wayfarer may receive some uh, breezes of uh, rahmah of Allah in the form of some attraction some jazbe for a spirituality so sometimes people who are very much involved with I don't know business with a study with family life etc but something happens that for some time they have attraction towards a spirituality towards salah towards ibadah and that's great opportunity that we have to 
grab. Wa inna li rabbikum fi ayyam dahrikum nafahatun ala fata'arradu laha wa la tu'aradu anha. Allah sometimes has some uh, winds or breezes of mercy and we should be able to expose ourselves to them and benefit from them. So there is a discussion here about jazba. Some people say jazbatun min jazabat al-haq tuwazi ibadat al-thaqalain. Sometimes one of these rat, uh, attractions can give us so much that is better than ibadah of thaqalain. Thaqalain is jinn and ins. Then he says the Pro main provision for a spiritual journey is mujahide wa riyazat nafsani so the main provision is our struggle our self disciplining our self exercise uh, for uh, detaching ourselves from dunya and from our uh, ego and little by little uh, or sometimes people quickly cut off these ties of belonging to the materialistic uh, world but then a problem starts or a problem maybe emerges not that it starts already there that first you get rid of katharat multiplicities in the external world but then you have kathrate and fusiye you have the psychic multiplicity this is inside us and we have to learn how to uh, get rid of this. You remember end of the book we had discussion about how to stop unwanted thoughts etc. And he says that the wayfarer is annoyed and hurt more by these psychic multiplicities than external ones. Because external ones are easier to defend and the most they can do is they can harm our body. But the internal ones can harm more our soul. Uh, and also we had very important point that the wayfarer should be very careful about not leaving any traces of impurity in corners or in you know some <laughs> layers of the nafs. Sometimes you think, Alhamdulillah, I have no ujb. Alhamdulillah, I have no hasad. But you don't know. Yes, maybe you don't ha have hasad with certain type of people or when you are at certain level of fame, for example, or respect, but maybe after that you will have it. So we have to be very careful. He said the example of the wayfarer is like a traveler who has reached Cheshmeya Hayat, the fountain of uh, life, and he wants to drink from it but then people come and attack him and ki try to kill him or someone who reaches a fountain and wants to wash himself but as soon as he wants to wash himself in that fountain all the dirts which were uh, in the bottom of that uh, fountain or that pool are now coming up and the water is not clean anymore uh, he says one of the things that the wayfarer should be able to achieve is to uh, witness to uh, his nafs or her nafs, the reality of nafs. And you remember we talked about Nure Esfah Bodiyeh. You would be able to see your nafs as a reality that has no physical uh, space. It's as if everywhere because our nafs is not uh, the same as our body our body is limited but nafs is not limited and we had also some uh, stories here uh, about this light of nafs and then of course after that is uh, to see the light of uh, higher realities the, we had a discussion about muraqaba in the beginning of the book and later in the end of the book also and he said 
one of the most important things in a spiritual journey which is like uh, zarurat one of the necessities is muraqaba from the first step up to the last step we need always muraqaba self monitoring and based on a strong muraqaba signs of hope and love will appear sometimes we may wonder why i don't have that strong love for allah in myself why i don't enjoy that love that orafa have for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they enjoy uh, ibadah salat whispering to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one major tool that we can use is muraqaba because with muraqaba little by little those obstacles that don't let us love allah will be removed with muraqaba kam kam hijab ha zaif shode little by little veils become uh, weaker and weaker and then they will be removed and that love that we as human beings have for allah in our fitra will emerge he says they call in mystical literature sometimes this type of uh, muraqaba which leads to love for Allah they call it wine or may in farsi and when the wayfarer is committed to muraqaba not only the innate love for Allah would emerge but also Allah would put more of his love in the heart of this person We had some uh, mentions of tajarrud uh, nafs the fact that the soul can be separated from body and we had this this story that Allah Taba Taba is teacher Ayatollah Qadi said one day he came out of the room to the corridor to the uh, hall uh, or corridor in the home and he says i saw myself silent somewhere and he says when i looked carefully uh, at my face i saw uh, something on my face that i had not noticed and then when he checked in mirror he found it uh, of course here there is a uh, point that uh, what is seeing what is the soul seeing the body or is the body uh, with some level of soul seeing the soul in any case this separation is very uh, common experience that many mystics have mentioned there was also a beautiful uh, story that ayatollah mirza uh, sorry uh, ayatollah mullah hussein quli hamadani asked his teacher mirza jawad agha maliki tabrizi to take care of one of the students and some people say uh, we don't know of any record that he gave such responsibility to a student uh, it shows how much trust he had in Mirza Jawad Agha Maliki Tabrizi so he said you work with these students for spirituality and after six years this student reached the position that he was able to have tajarrud nafs to experience this separation of the soul from body but he took him to his teacher to mullah husain quli amadani so that the teacher himself uh, takes him further and he says uh, i took him with my uh, with my uh, myself to the teacher's house and teacher said in ke cheesiness this is nothing and then with a movement of his hand he made a, a point at something and said tajarrud misle inast he says tajarrud is like this and then that student said i saw that i am separated from my body and i saw something next to me that i was able to watch so this is result of muraqaba uh, we had also a story of uh, ayatollah said ahmad karbalai 
who was another student of Mullah Hussein Quli Hamedani, who was a teacher of Ayatollah the Qazi, about how he was having some rest and someone went to awaken him and said, if you want to see Nur Esfah Bodiye, come and see. And he said, I saw a light without a limit. So it was from east to the west. Uh, even to say east to the west is a kind of analogy because it's not east or west. It's, it has no uh, di direct direction or no physical dimension. So I saw this light everywhere, which is this is the light of nafs. And then you can go even higher. Uh, we had a discussion here that Tilawat uh, Quran, recitation of the Quran, has great impact on this. Later, also, if you remember, we had uh, many of the wayfarers managed to have that. Uh, opening during recitation of Quran or with Tawassul to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And it was here that he referred to the recitation of Surat Saad in the night of Jum'ah there is hadith that if you recite Surat Saad in the night of Jum'ah Allah would give khayr al dunya wal akhira ma lam yu'ta ahadun ma lam yu'ta ahadun min al nas so much of good of dunya and akhira that no one has been given illa nabiyyul mursal aw malakun muqarrab except a prophet who has been sent by Allah or an angel which is brought nearer wa adkhalahu Allah al jannah wa kull man ahabba min ahli baytihi hatta khadimihi alladhi yakhdimu Allah would take him into heaven and everyone that he loves from his family, even the servant that was serving him, even if this servant was not equal to his family or was not someone that would be qualified for shafa of this person, still Allah lets that person to be with him. This is why we decided to have reflection on Surat Saad. Then we had a point that is this something that is only for Anbiya and Imma or Imams or we and ordinary people also can get it. And he said the position of Nubuwa, the position of Imama, these positions are of course given based on the need and they are not always available today no one can become a prophet for example or to, no, no one can become imam we have already imam but when you come to the uh, spirituality and to being able to achieve highest levels of uh, spirituality there is no limitation of course uh, we know that we are not going to be preceding, for example, you know, uh, certain prophets, certain individuals. But not that because we are stopped or we are, you know, asked not to go further. No, that is based on uh, um, our information. Uh, as we say in philosophy, it's uh, uh, based on empirical fact that we know that this has not happened otherwise we can go to high levels of spirituality and there is no, no limit here uh, he said Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, asked people to follow him for every step and one dimension of he being a good uswa for us is that we can follow his path of spirituality. He quoted a hadith from our Sunni brothers 
Det är Rasulullah sa att Lola taksirun fi kalamikum Wa tamrijun fi qulubikum La ra'aytum ma ara Wa la sami'atum ma asma Had it not been that you speak too much And you let these things come and go In your heart Stress, worries Thoughts which are not useful Had it not been because of these two La ra'aytum ma ara you would have been able to see what I see. You would be able to hear what I hear. You would hear angels talking. You would be able to see angels, spirits, etc. Barzakh. So it shows that we have ability to have high levels of spirituality and also shows what are the obstacles, what are the things that stop us. حمدك يا إلهي بدأت قولي وجدتك فاضعا Then there was a discussion that at the same time that we have to be a spiritual, we also have to take care of our responsibilities in this world and we can have both. Then he said, two groups of people have experienced and have actually talked about these uh, spiritual facts. One group is prophets, and they try to uh, bring the conversation to the level that people understand. As they said, نَحْنُ مَعَاشِرَ الْأَنْبِيَا أُمِرْنَا أَنْ نُكَلِّمَ النَّاسِ عَلَىٰ قَدْرِ أُقُولًا We are asked to uh, speak to people according to their level of aql, level of intellect. So things which are very difficult, they try to tell us in the way that we understand. We shouldn't think that everything is what is, uh, these, uh, what is conveyed by these words. The second group are some people who followed the path of the prophets, and they also have mentioned some of these facts, but they also had to use estare uh, and something, metaphorical language and analogy. Then we had very interesting discussion about the difference between khulus and ikhlas. One is about purification of our actions. وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلَسِينَ الْحُدْبِينَ We have to purify for the sake of Allah our religious practices, our religious uh, acti activities, etc. But a higher level is to purify ourselves. Man akhlasa lillah arba'ina sabahan doesn't mean just akhlasa lillah salatahu aw sawmahu. Akhlasa lillah everything means you purify your life for Allah and purify your heart for the sake of Allah. Uh, and this is what mukhlasin, those who are purified, have achieved. The same difference can be made, or similar difference can be made between man amila salihan or amilu salihat, doing righteous deeds, and you yourself becoming salih. If you are salih, if you are righteous, is much higher than doing righteous deeds. Yes, some of the people who do righteous deeds themselves are also righteous. But some people do righteous deeds and still they have not become themselves righteous then he had a discussion about some of the merits of people who are mukhlas for example the first one was that iblis says fabi'izzatika la'ughviyannahum ajma'in illa ibadaka minhumul mukhlasin by your dignity i'm going to deceive all of them except those servants of you who are purified. So even Iblis that is exaggerating here. I think he's exaggerating because is not true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has so much of support that many people apart from Mukhlasin were not deceived by Iblis. But his aim was this. He would deceive all human beings Except Mukhlasin. But Alhamdulillah, many other people also were not deceived by him. But this shows that Mukhlasin 
even for Iblis who is exaggerating his ability were beyond his reach. This is number one. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that فَإِنَّهُمْ لَمُحْوَرُونَ إِلَّا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ الْمُخْلَصِينَ They are all going to be brought up for judgment except those who are mukhlas. Means mukhlasin would not <coughs> go through questioning. The third is that Allah says, وَمَا تُجْزَوْنَ إِلَّا مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ إِلَّا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ الْمُخْلَصِينَ Every group of people will be receiving reward or punishment based on what they have been doing. Of course, with, when it comes to hasanat, Allah would multiply, but anyway, it's certain times more than what they have done. So it's proportionate to what they have done, but maybe multiplied as well. With sayyat, man jaabi sayyat fala yudza illa mithla. So, you receive reward or punishment based on what you have been doing. Maybe the same, maybe for example reward is 10 times more, 100 times more, etc. But Allah says, Illa ibad Allah al mukhlasin. This shows that with mukhlasin there is no calculation. With mukhlasin they have like blank check. Uh, they get whatever you know they want and Allah is very generous with them. Actually maybe Allah gives mukhlasin chance to give to other people also and to do uh, definitely not only shafa maybe even more. He also refers to this ayah lahumma yashauna fiha wa ladayna mazid and he tries to say that this uh, refers to also mukhlasin and he says they have whatever they want there and we have even more for them so Allah gives them this chance the fourth merit is that they can do proper description of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah says, Subhanallah, Amma Yasafun, Illa Ibad Allah Hil Mukhlasin. Everyone who describes Allah, we need to do tasbih, we need to do glorify, say Allah is greater than this. Their, tas their tawsif, their wasp, their description falls short. But Mukhlasin, they are qualified to do tawsif or description of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then there was a discussion about Zuhd. That Zuhd, renunciation from dunya, is needed for a spiritual journey. But Zuhd first is uh, detaching yourself from dunya and material things. But then you have to detach yourself also from your own self that you love so much. And uh, we had a discussion also about this. We had a story that one day Allah Bahr al Ulum Rahmatullah Alai was very happy. His students saw that he's smiling, he's happy. And they asked him why. He said, After 25 years of Mujahada struggle, now that when I looked at myself, I realized that my actions are not uh, Riyai, they are not insincere. And I have been able to achieve sincerity after 25 years of mujahada. Then we had a discussion about uh, different levels of Islam and Iman and Hijrah and Jihad. We said each of them has Asghar, Akbar, A'zam and we talked about all these uh, different degrees uh, 
And then what I would like to do, because our time is very limited, I want to refer to some of the instructions, practical instructions that he introduced to us. The first one was, uh, we have to, of course, we had a uh, brief and ejmali, which, uh, you know, we have to pr have proper aqidah, etc. Uh, but also we had a detailed one and we said that we have to first be able to get rid of bad customs adab or rusum which are not useful uh, you know and tarufat some of the formalities which are not useful you try to be very respectful and polite, but you have to be careful. There are some superstitious customs, you know, or some things which are not useful. The second was, was azm, determination. We talked about determination. The third was ref and mudara, moderation and balance. Four was loyalty, wafa. Fifth was sabat wa davam, persistence and steadfastness and continuity many people unfortunately after some time they uh, stop they don't continue uh, the next one six was muraqaba self-monitoring fifth was muhasaba keeping a record of our actions and we take account of our actions eight was muakhada you question yourself you keep yourself you know answerable nine was musara the things which need to be done quickly you should do it quickly tenth was erada devotion eleventh was adab observe manners and etiquettes twelfth was niya about intention Thir uh, thirteenth was silence, samt, reducing our speech. Fourteenth was hunger and reduction of eating. Fifteenth was khalwa, loneliness. We talked about significance of khalwa. Sixteenth was about reducing our uh, sleeping, especially being awake uh, in the late portion of night before fajr. Seventeenth was being always with Tahara, always with Tahara, cleanliness and ritual cleanliness and also puberty, wuzu, uh, for those who are, sorry, not puberty, purity, ritual purity, wuzu, uh, ghost, etc. As if you want to start Salat, as if you want to uh, do something some about it. So always you are in that condition. Eighteenth, Mubalighe dar tazarru, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wholeheartedly and uh, requesting him and begging him for help. Nineteenth was avoiding ihtiraz as ladha'is, pleasures which are not uh, pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or are too much of uh, pleasures of you know material pleasure etc. Twentieth Ketman Sir keeping secrets of this journey this spiritual journey private and hidden. Twenty one was about Sheikh and Ustad, about master and do two types of teacher and you know what should we do. Twenty two was Verd those zeks that have to be done we talked about different types of word. 23, Nafi Khawater. This was a discussion that uh, there was, it was expanded. Uh, stopping unwanted thoughts and memories to come. 24 was Zekr and 25th was Fekr. Then there was a discussion about the method of Bahrul Ulum, Rahmatullah in his Risale, Yasir Suluk. Uh, which was, for example, you know, making something and focusing on that, for example, half an hour and trying uh, to forget other things. And he had the idea that the zikr is better to be used f for itself, 
not as a way to uh, stop the enemy. But then the method of Akhun Mullah Hussein Guli Hamedan etc. was that even for uh, stopping Khawater, we use Zekr. And then uh, there was a discussion about four different alam, four different realms would be unveiled for wayfarer after complete muraqaba and tawajjuh be nafs muraqaba and paying attention to your nafs uh, with respect to essence with respect to uh, sifat to af'al of Allah subhanahu wa names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then there was a discussion at the end about uh, what mystics mean by phonics the bird which is very high and it's very difficult for us to even uh, see it from distance which refers to that alam azat reaching the point that uh, after tawhid with respect to action and names and qualities we have understanding of tawhid of zat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay this was a quick review of the book I didn't do justice to the book. The book is much more ex explaining much more. I just tried a very quick review. Uh, and I hope, inshallah, uh, you would be able to review it again after some time. Um, go back after maybe a few weeks, few months ma maximum before you forget things. Review it, do it mubahasa, so that inshallah remains. And then those points that have to be practiced, of course, we have to practice it on a daily basis. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen